Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. I'm Brent Hutchinson. This is BBG Guitars. Um, different video for you today. Usually I'm showing you how to make a tin box or an oil can or something like that. But today I'm revisiting, revisiting my Harley Benton ST70 Black, Black Paisley. Now that easy for you to say. Um, because since I've been, since I've started doing the uh, custom guitar builds, people have been very generous and they've donated lots of parts for me to use and things like that, which is really great. And I'm really thankful for that. Thank you very much. Keep them coming. It's great. It helps me out a lot. Um, and one guy sent me a package of a whole load of stuff and screws and things like that. And within that package was some Fender Stagger tuners, a Fender two-point tremolo, and some very nice pots that you would uh, typically find in a USA Fender with the, obviously, the, the pegs for it. And... In stock, I also have a set of um, noiseless Fender noiseless pickups. Um, so I've already done the tuners. So I thought, well, why not? So the tuners are on there already with string trees, and I love them. They're great. Check out my video. I'll put it up here somewhere um, of my review of this guitar um, as it is stock. As it is stock. It doesn't need touching. These Roswell pickups are just great. Um, tremolo systems, Wilkinson's just great. The tuners, yeah, eh, cheap end, but they do the job. And I never had real bad tuning issues with with this guitar. And I've been gigging this guitar for a couple of years now, and uh, it really is my go-to guitar. I love this thing. So the upgrades I'm doing to this guitar, in my opinion, aren't really necessary. Um, but I've got the parts, so I might as well. So this is basically based on second-hand parts. Um, you can buy these new, obviously, but these were all second-hand parts. So um, I think the tremolo system you can pick up for about £50 um, on eBay or wherever. Uh, the tuners are around about the same, £50 to £70. The pickups are about £80 to £100. So really this whole upgrade, second-hand, costs about £200. The guitar itself is £130 from Toman. I'll stick a link in the description. Um, so overall, this guitar would then cost three, about £330. And a little bit of work. The pots, I don't know if I will change. I'll have a look inside because this has got a cool split here on the um, on this. Uh, these aren't cool split. Is it really worth changing them? I don't know. This one does have a bit of a crackle. But... I could probably clean that out, but we'll have a look. I, I probably will leave the pots as they are. Anyway, to the workshop. <laughs> okay, strings are off. Uh, let's get this scratch plate off and we'll do the pickups first, I think. I'm just replacing these two. I don't have a humbucker, but I'm, I'm happy with the humbucker anyhow. So I'm just going to replace these two with these two. And I've got one for the neck, the yellow. The one with the yellow positive is for the neck. It's hotter. And the one with the white is for the middle. You just take that white wire off there. Remember, it's the third lug in. Take her off. And then the earth will be going to, which is very long, probably to the volume pot. It goes to the side of the... Usually you um, ground them to the volume pot, but this one, if I'm getting the right cable, is grounded there to the side of the switch. I'm gonna cut that because it's wrapped around lots of other wires, lots of other refs, they're all in the same point. So I'm just gonna cut that off there. Unless I'll pick up three. 
Okay, just remove the pickup. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any other black pickup covers. So I'm hoping these covers will fit. Um, I could take the Roswell off the covers and it's already starting to come off from playing. We'll leave it. Um, it depends how much of a snob you are about it. I'm never going to resell this guitar, so I'm not too worried. It's just for me. Okay. Pick up out. Right. You can have a good look at these Roswells. Look. There you go. Not too shabby, really. Pretty nice. Now, so it's the yellow one. Let's see if this cover fits. And it doesn't, of course. Mm. Not a good fit. Because it looks as if it's, if you can see, it's a bit taller than the other one. So the pole pieces aren't coming out en enough. Um, there is room for me to shave it down a bit, but not much. Which is a shame, so I will end up having to have white covers on these pickups, which I didn't really want. Until I can get some black ones another time, I suppose. But I don't like the look of that. No. So we're sticking with the white, aged. But that's okay, I've got a white nut and we've got a white end on our thingy. Hey. <laughs> so the pickup's in. It actually doesn't look too bad against the uh, the black scratch plate. I think that's going to look fine. It might be a little odd because the pickup's black, but hey, it is what it is. I could swap the knobs for white knobs. I've got some nice aged ones that I could put on there just to give it a bit of continuity but I don't mind too much I could always order some black covers if it gets on my nerves that much I don't think it will right so these wires are obviously too short now so I need to extend them so I'm, what I'm going to do because I'm going to use these Roswells in a different project maybe later um, I'm going to borrow some of the cable from this because it's very very long so I should probably just cut a bit off of there enough to get from there to there Probably about that much to get from there to there and also the earth to get from there to there so this is how I extend wires from pickups so you've got your, your extension piece of wire and you've got your other your wire from your pickup you strip the ends down always twist twist the ends together you've got your soldering iron hot ready to go so make sure they're all wound and then I line them up together like this and then twist those together real tight like that so they're together get the soldering iron and a bit of solder which is hot I'm just going to rest that on there and heat that up a bit Like so. And then I'm going to get the, sol the solder, hold it against the wire. So you're sandwiching the wire between the soldering iron and the solder. Oh, there it goes. And then it will start to melt the solder. You can help it along a little bit by touching the solder line. Here we go. And then that will weld that twist together. That's what you want. You can be quite generous. And that is going to keep that nice and tight and in place. Once that's cooled, which doesn't take long, I'll have to get a bit of insulating tape um, 
flatten that down like this. I'll bend this down like that. So now it looks like that. And then just get a small piece of tape. That was bad. That was bad. <laughs> a small bit of tape like this. I'm using my teeth. I should have used a blade. And then just seal it off like that with the tape. And then you could either cut that or I just wrap it round so that that's not going to come in contact with anything and cause any buzzing or any other problems like so you could use shrink wrap if you wanted but that's good enough and that's a nice and tight join on there and then we just connect that to that on there we're good to go okay so that's connected give it a tug make sure it's all tight it's tight that's in so we do the same thing with the earth we're just gonna connect it back to where it came from which I don't know if you can see there's a collection of earth wires going to here right so with the earths I'm gonna do them together so I'm gonna wind them together and then I'm gonna tin the wires I don't know what tinning means it means you just add some heat and add some solder to the wire um, which makes it adhere better that makes sense when you come to put it in it's a pretty much similar situation to or similar method to when I extended the wire you're just adding solder to the wind it all goes into the wind when the wires are wound together it makes it all the stronger and then we're going to get that fiddly this bit into there what I'm going to try and do, try and get, not get my head in the way. Mm, it's going to be a difficult one. So I'm going to put some solder on the iron. And I'm going to try not to melt anything on the way. Dab that on there. So it sticks. There we go. That's got it. And that's got it. That's in there, brilliant. So now I'm gonna test it, because they're all in. So. Okay, just gonna test these. So that's working. Unbucked, working, middle. Lovely. All good. Pickups in, scratch plates down, it's all working, great. Next job, to take this trim off. Um, this Wilkinson trim is actually a pretty decent trim, um, but as many of you may know, a two-point trim offers less resistance and binding and can be better for uh, stability, tuning stability. Even though this trim I haven't had a whole lot of problems with at all, this literally is just a case of I have it, so I might as well change it for the fender type if I can. Um, so it's got a whole fender upgrade. Um, this trim will be used somewhere else, of course. Uh, but you can see. It's a pretty decent trim with a nice block. Nice big block on there. It's got some weight to it. It's got a nice push-pull arm. Fender type saddles. It's it's good. <coughs> so the question is, how difficult is this going to be to fit? And lucky for me, those two holes line up exactly. So that's absolutely amazing. Um, so all I have to do is screw a hole in there, screw a hole in there, big enough for these. So what I shall do is we'll get the uh, yeah that's real good that is real good real good uh, appropriate bits so I think it's gonna be it'd be an eight or ten let's have a look an eight it's a ten. Right. That 
soon. I don't want to push it too far. It needs to go a bit deeper. It needs to go deeper than that. Um, where's the... Yeah, that's... So, a little bit deeper. It's going to have to go through, I think. It's had to have gone through. So, there we go. And that is splendid. Yeah. Just gonna fit bang on. Right, so that went in really easy. I'm really glad about that. Um, so while I've got it all like this, I'm gonna take advantage of the situation and do a service and a fret polish. I'm gonna polish these frets up. I'm gonna check them for level and I'll just use an old trim plate as a rocker and just go down all the frets making sure there's no highs or lows. There shouldn't be because I did this when I first bought the guitar but it has been a couple of years. Ooh, there is a bit of a high fret there. Sometimes it's just a case of going through and just tapping them down where they might be high a little bit. It's a little bit there. Just on the end there. So I'll just mark that with my Sharpie. Oh, no. There. And I'll try tapping it down first. If not, I'll just give it a little polish out. A little file. That one is a little bit too. So across that one. Oh, so we found a few. Middle of that. On there. And that one there. Like that. So we've got a few fret issues. Um, like I say, this guitar is a couple of years old. And I did do the frets when I first got it. They weren't terrible. Um, but you do get movement sometimes. These are all good up top. That's fine. Happy. Yeah, so, so there's a few issues, one, two, three, four frets, just got a few high spots, um, which I can take care of, I'll, take, I'll do that in a minute. First, I want to look at this trim, and because it's a second hand trim, um, I just want to make sure there's no burrs on any of these saddles, because it has been used, and while it's off, I'll just take the advantage of that, and I'm just going to, with my polishing tool and my drum, I'm just going to polish the top of these off. Um, just to make 100% sure. Um, okay. So let's see if we can tap these frets down. They're a, a bit high. So I've got a block of wood underneath the neck to support it. A piece of wood. It's an off cut. So I'm going to put it over the the line I made. And we're just going to. Gently tap it Let's see if that <sighs> solves it very nearly. So I'm just going to tap that line a bit more.
Yep, that's gone. This one's high in the middle there. Yep, that's got it. That's got that. This one. Gone. This one's really rocking now. I can actually see that it's lifted there. So I might have an issue. Frets popping. Gone. Make sure it's not looking here. A little bit in the middle, still on that one. gone so that was what was up with that if it keeps doing it I haven't noticed any buzzing or anything when I've been playing so it couldn't have been that bad but if it keeps doing it then it might have to have a refret we'll see so I'm going to polish these frets up now with a bit of rubbing compound you can get from uh, car places uh, got it from Halfords let's put some dabs on it's probably too much let me go to town Goggles on, as you do. There you go, job literally takes five minutes and makes a world of difference to how the frets feel and play. Easy to remove the rest, just get rid of all the residue. Uh, so it's all together and strung up, everything lines up pretty cool. Um, so I'm going to do a setup. Obviously, you could click a video that's going to pop up right now. Bing! And that's a video on how to set your guitar action in minutes. It's a method I often use. Um, and I may change the knobs. I don't know. But uh, I'll see you in the studio for the sound test and final thoughts. Okay, so mods are all done. Um, pickups are in. Fender tuners. Fender uh, string trees, can't remember what they were called then. Fender two point trem, three springs, uh, and it, there is a difference, quite a big difference. <laughs> Thank you.
Yeah, so the trim is a lot smoother. It stays in tune a lot better. It tunes a lot smoother. Uh, the pickups are Fender noiseless pickups and they sound like Fender noiseless pickups to me. Um, they are different to the Roswells. I didn't have a problem with the Roswells at all. I think the Roswell pickups are good. I think the Roswell humbucker sits fine with the Fenders as well. So, am I glad I did the upgrades? Yeah, I am glad I did the upgrades um, because they're superior parts, so it's going to sound superior and it certainly plays better. Um, would I pay for the parts to do to upgrade one of these? Now I've done it, yeah, I probably would because even though they're secondhand parts, they work just as well as new parts, there's nothing wrong with them at all. Um, they're fender parts, so they're going to last anyway. Um, and for the money, for £200 on top of the £130, bearing in mind a Mexican Stratocaster is about £500 now, I think, for a standard Mexican Stratocaster, um, it's well worth it, because the neck on these things play great, the bodies are fine, they're nice and solid, and with a good setup, you can uh, get a guitar that is actually much higher spec than a Mexican Strat, um, for a fraction of the cost. It all depends on whether you care about the name. It all, de all depends on whether you're a gear snob. I'm not. I don't care. I, it, all, what matters to me is whether it plays nice and sounds nice. Harley Benton. I'm not ashamed to have Harley Benton on any of my gear. I think it's good gear. Um, so that's my two penneth. And plus, as well, I've managed to upgrade another guitar with the parts that I took from the Harley Benton. So I've got a couple of Roswell pickups in here. The Wilkinson trim on here on my old Aria Nexter, so which is a vast improvement for this guitar. So, there you go. Anyway, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you like these kind of videos. I can do more videos like this. I also do reviews and I build guitars, custom guitars, out of anything I can find, really. So, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. See you later. Bye.